Welcome aboard. This week we have a very special episode for you. We have an early review of Monster Hunter Rise. We chat about some ducks. And we have a very, very special interview to share with you all, featuring the one and only Stan Bush. This is Triple XP. Triple XP. Welcome all to episode 26. I'm Shane and this is Mike. Hello. So this week we don't have a special guest joining us today with with us right now, but we have instead got a very special interview to share with you all that we recorded earlier in the week. But more on that later. Firstly, Mike, should we get straight into what we've been playing? Yeah, man. Yeah. So... Do you want to kick us off with your monster yeah, we, hunter i mean we don't have a guest this week do we so no let's no. get straight into it it's just, it's just me and you <laughs> <laughs> um so i've been playing monster hunter rise it's it, I'm, I'm early days in it but it's really fucking good i'm really enjoying it i'm already hooked um so i've got, I've got lots of questions so when I'll, I'll let you do your little bit about it but i do have lots of questions about this game yeah, so it sort of has this feudal Japan setting, um, with and all the artwork that comes with it. Like it's it's the setting's like really cool. There's music in there that's of of like that's that sort of time period, and it's all fits in really well. But then you have these huge fuck off like massive weapons, which is kind of like weird. But but yeah, um, so I'm still early days into it. If you played Monster Hunt before, you kind of know what it's about. But if not. You literally kill monsters, grind the loot, make more weapons, and that is pretty much it. Um, this time you have dogs, which is great. That's always a plus. Um, dogs in any game is a plus. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you can't pet the dog, as far as I know. Oh, uh, you probably can. You probably can. It's probably like a gesture or something. But yeah, so go, go on, Shane. What what are your questions, just... man? Um, so, I mean, firstly, I didn't know there were dogs. Do the dogs, are the dogs like the, what are they called, the palicos? Do they do anything? Do they help you in battle or they just, do they just look cool? The dogs are called, um, pal palamutes or palamutes, like the, right. uh, like the dog breed. What are they called? Like malamute, is it? Like husky dog? Yep. Um, so are they, they're called, they're the called palamutes. Version. So are they the dog versions of the palicos that were in Monster Hunter Rise uh, World. Essentially, they kind of work the same, apart from you can jump on the dog and ride the dog, which is amazing. I mean, that's that's cool. Yeah, a apart, anything apart, where you can ride. Yeah, apart from when you're in combat, you can do that at any point, um, which is really that's, cool. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty sweet. So, firstly, because I've only ever played one Monster Hunter game, have you played others apart from these two? So I've played, played world. I played world a lot. Um, I have played others. Like I played number three on the Wii, was it? And I think I played four, and then I played one on the Switch, which, uh, not the Switch, the DS, which I can't remember what it's called. I played one on the DS. Um, but world was by far like the one that got me into Monster Hunter, like hugely. Yeah. It was just so. Um, I was just gonna say it's that sort of. They really modernised the controls and made it sort of new player friendly. We could just jump in at any point and and you, you know like it was pretty simple. Like they simplified it a lot, made it more fluid in the terms of movement and stuff like that. And they've just kind of furthered that with this game. Um, well, that that's one of the things I did want to ask: is have they maintained that user friendliness that World had, or has it gone back to the? Uh, much less user friendly world of the DS and Wii ones. I mean, because I'm so used to world and that control system, with the implementation of this new wirebug system, which is essentially like a little creature that gives you like a Spider Man swing that you can zip around the map. Uh, you can use it to dodge attacks, you can use it to recover, 
and then you can use it to ju jump into like a special attack kind of thing. So they've added that, but because they've added it on certain mapped controls, it changes the controls a little bit from world. And there was just like a what? little bit of a disconnect there for me. It was a bit jarring coming in as a Monster Hunter world player. But in terms okay. of in terms of like the weapon combat and stuff, it's sort of muchly the same. Like, yeah. So, are the Monster Hunter games set all in the same universe, or are they? Is every game set in its own pocket universe? Are they? How do they intertwine? Like, I know the monsters often are the same, but are they all in this? Are they all in the same world? Um, same um, characters, same people, things like that, or are they all different? I think it's it's sort of a bit how Final Fantasy works, where there's a little bit of crossover. Right. But they're not necessarily the same world. As far as I know, I'm not too too hot on the lore. Like, I just jump in and punch monsters in the face. That's yeah, why I like this game. Only... <laughs> no, that's fair. And the only reason I asked, you said about it having like a feudal Japan feel, but obviously world felt more like it was not necessarily modern day, but definitely pushing past feudal Japan. So... That's what made me wonder whether they are set in the same sort of like universe or not. Yeah, I mean, um, it could it could be like just a design choice with the aesthetic of it. Yeah, because you're essentially so, just in a, in this village and you help, you know, you help villagers around there doing hunts and stuff for them and things like that. Okay, so what are the? Because I know World had not it wasn't a huge issue, but it was a it, it was one of the issues. And it, I know it's something that Monster Hunter suffered from in the past. What are the loading times like? Um, actually, pretty quick. Yeah, there's no real. I've not had any issues. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty rapid. That's like good. Can, does, it can, feel, feel like does it feel like Does it feel like it's utilizing the Switch's power? Definitely. Yeah, it's a really like good looking game. Um, up there with sort of Breath of the Wild, Mario Odyssey, those games. It's it's that same level for sure. It's, it's cool. graphically like it's I can't follow it at all. No, that's that's really pleasing to hear actually, because um, I do I worry with the Switch because I love my Switch and there are I, I, in my opinion there are only maybe five or somewhere between five or ten games enough that you can count on your hands that really utilize the power. Uh, the rest of the games I don't feel utilize it, the Switch's power at all. Um, mm. So it's pleasing to know that they are sort of pushing pushing what the switch can do and making sure it, that it's not just because uh, the, the easy thing for them to have done was they could have made it a ds game on the switch yeah i mean i mean i've not noticed any issues with like frame rate anything like that and the combat does get really intense and um yeah but i never had those issues in world either with the any kind of frame rate or anything like that not that i can remember um okay but yeah it's, it's so really solid really smooth like combat's fluid once you get used to the controls. Yeah. Okay, so have you played with anyone else yet, like any friends or anything? I've not played online yet, no. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm quite early days into it and I'm just sort of enjoying the initial grind where it's not too hard on your own. And then when it gets more yeah. tricky, I'm like, I might call some friends in and be like, help me, please. Well, in a, in a couple of weeks then, um, we'll have, I, I'll be interested to hear on, on one of our future podcast what what the online functionality is like because i mean a we know that the switches online can be temperamental at best yeah. um, it's not they've not exactly got the best setup have they especially in a game where arguably i'd say monster hunter you do need to be able to talk a little bit yeah definitely um, and obviously switch doesn't have that in-house capability um but also and even world suffered from this even though it was on um like the playstation and xbox and that I've always, I, I found at least the the way that the joining function for Monster Hunter, although you got used to it, it's bloody horrible. <laughs> it's just awful. Yeah, it was really awkward in Worlds. Like you had to like jump into a bunch of different sub menus and stuff. But... And like massive codes for your friends and stuff, which it was just an unpleasant system. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they've simplified that a little bit, made the system flow a little bit better. Um, is I mean, it still di sorry go ahead no go on um, I was just going to say is it still dialogue heavy as well because that, that's another thing like Monster Hunter games at least the one the one I've played although the 
your focus is always on the battle. There's a lot of dialogue in between. Is it still quite heavy on the dialogue and the storyline? Yeah, I mean, there's there's plenty there's plenty there to sort of sink your teeth into, definitely. Um, I wouldn't say it's heavy, but there are a lot of people to to speak to. If you, um, yeah, you know, if you want the story, it's there. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, I've got I've got three more questions for you, and then I am all questioned away. out. Fire away, man! <laughs> best weapon so far in the new, in the new one. Oh, or you the know, best weapon you've used. You know what? This might surprise you. Like I was, I was a bit of a longsword main in a uh, world. I use that a lot. Um, this time it's it's the hunting horn. They've, they've had like a complete revamp of it, um, and it just makes it really like fluid and fast, and you can literally nice. hit a dinosaur bird in the face with a guitar. <laughs> so like and who doesn't want to do that? Exactly. Exactly guitar. I always main that what the the charge blade that was like the blade that could turn into an axe. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But then turn back into a sword. Yeah, I've been ju- I've been jumping into a different different ones and they are muchly the same as world in terms of like how they attack and things like some are, are fine but with the hunting horn they've really changed it so yep. you can you can almost like build up combos and then once you trigger like a the special ability move it will then attack the you know the monster but it will buff your team as well like which has been a staple of that but it's, it's just more fluid like you'll you'll be continually hitting the monster yeah, and causing damage, but you'll also be buffing your team rather than having to stop and like you know play a little tune or whatever. Okay, that sounds good. That's pleasing. So my uh, second question, that of the last questions I have, uh, I keep seeing articles that are like, how to unlock the second submarine. What? Submarine. What are these submarines? Yeah, I keep seeing articles that are like how to unlock the culture exchange submarine. I have no but idea you, what that you is. Said, you said feudal Japan, so I was like, I'm confused as to why there's submarines. Yeah, I've, I, like like I said, I'm early days. You know, I'm about like hunter rank level two, or I think I've just earned three. Um, well, when you discover what the submarines are, uh, yeah, I uh, you know, I'll be... look forward to finding out. <laughs> I'll be tweeting it out. <laughs> why are there submarines um, here? Yeah, why are there submarines? What is happening? Um, I say feudal Japan, like... but it's sort of like... I mean, it's still Monster Hunter. It's, yeah. it's, I think it's just like an aesthetic. So there's yeah, going to be like no, crazy I... weird shit. And... No, I get that. It, uh, again, though, I just haven't seen anything like a submarine in Wild. Um, yeah. So it'll be interesting to see like what that looks like. Because very much and at least from from as i say i know it's mentioned in world locks it's the only one i've played and there's probably people screaming at us who have played all of them that are like no, there's so much more lore to this yeah but yeah. um because like world everything seemed like it was built out of wood like the yeah you had boats and stuff but yeah, the idea yeah. of a submarine just just doesn't comprehend with my brain because my but but or everything you own is built out of wood <laughs> <laughs> so i'll be interested to see what that's what that's about yeah um, no idea Last question then. This is my last one on Monster Hunter Rise. What's the best monster you've battled so far or seen so far? Not necessarily battle, because I know sometimes you come across ones that are obviously well above your level. Um, yeah. And Monster Hunter is the the monster design is something I've always really enjoyed about Monster Hunter. So I think they are really well designed creatures. Yeah. Um, so this so. so far I've fought about six different monsters. Two yeah. of them looking kind of similar but they have different abilities like one could put you to sleep with its spit which is gross <laughs> but i love it um another one is just like a bit of a raptor type thing uh, right there's another weird bird thing that just dances at you um it's pretty easy to take down but then my favorite is probably either so far there's in the first sort of level there's a like a bear type monster and it's not huge um, but it's big enough to like be quite intimidating, so I've been enjoying fighting those. It's like a big, big bear, and then the in the second level is like a snow rabbit that's that like spins around on the floor and stuff. It's pretty wild. Um, that's another good one. 
But yeah, I've, I've heard um, that the, they've already announced some DLC for this. And um, there's one monster that's sort of a chameleon that can turn invisible, which sounds really interesting. That sounds like Very a really fun fight. But I think it's one of those, you know, end game. Once everybody's completed the game, they'll release this DLC. Well, they're really good. I mean, at least they were of world. They're very good at having like ongoing, updated like monsters and events and things like that. Um, they're they're very like supportive of their games, and I think World was getting support for like well into two years after. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, it came out. They were getting like monthly monster like monster of the month, and I remember they had like the Street Fighter crossover, and then you had the Final Fantasy crossover. Yeah, there was get... there was uh, Geralt from. The Witcher, there was um, Dante there was as loads, well. Wasn't yeah, there? there was tons, yeah. And they came with their own so, weapons and stuff as well. And Aloy as well on the PS4. Which was well, cool. hopefully, Wise will have... I can't see why, why, why Wise wouldn't have um, just as much support because I say I think that's a bit of a staple of their of the way they make their games is that they're constantly putting new monsters in and supporting it and putting in events. So, Yeah, what I'd really love is if they just put Bowser in as a... I was about to say, where's the, where's the Mario crossover? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're back on the Switch. Where's the back in the Nintendo? Yeah, give me a Mario skin. Or uh, give me a Pokemon crossover and you have to fight like a giant Pikachu, like a oh humongous one. It's just like stomping around some desert somewhere. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Sold. <laughs> just, yeah, just do it. Just do it. Monster every, Hunter. Every episode, there seems to be one point where we're like, yeah, this game, but with Pokemon. <laughs> And then it'll be awesome. <laughs> well, they should just do an event where for like a one week period or a couple of days or so, whatever, a long weekend, every single monster in Monster Hunter Rise just becomes a giant version of like, just gets a skin to look like a Pokemon. So each one looks like a different Pokemon, but just do it for a one weekend only special event. Yeah. The amount of people awesome, that be on that. Yeah. But I think Monster Hunter in Japan is huge. In fact, I read um, a, a news article that said that uh, there's a company in Japan that so many people booked the day off for this game's release that they just gave everyone in the company the day off. Yeah, there's, uh, I can believe it. So I, I don't think I've ever mentioned on this podcast before. I can't remember if I have or not. So I've actually been to Japan twice. Um, I've been very lucky in that. And on one of the occasions I went, I uh, went to this, like, found this like really, really tiny little bar that was um, quite close to our hotel. And it was literally called a secret bar. And you went yeah. down the set of stairs into this bar and it had two tables and the bar. And that was it. We're talking tiny. It was like smaller than my living room, tiny. <laughs> um, and we, we weren't in there. And ch- the, the wait- two waitresses in there, absolutely lovely, spoke a bit of English. So we were able to communicate with them really well. Um, funny enough, actually, I was talking to her about um, she was like a cosplay um, competition uh, she like she entered this cosplay competition. She, she was telling me about her cosplay, and um, she mentioned her partner, and she was like, "Oh yeah, it's him." And this guy was sitting next to me at the bar, mm. and uh, he introduced himself to me, and he was showing me his records for being like one of the second, um, like in the Street Fighter champion in the world. Oh my god! And I was like, Jesus, <laughs> hello. <laughs> um, was that quite anyway. intimidating? <laughs> um, not really. But, um, <laughs> like this guy could probably more... beat me up more shocking just like, <laughs> oh hello just ran into some like street fighter extraordinaire um but anyway the point point of this story was we were so we was at this bar and I was chatting and they went the two tables were busy so i was at the bar and um i said i was just chatting to the waitress and i said oh like how do you get a lot of business down there because it's quite hard to find this little bar and um she said oh the people that are here they come here all the time and it was two businessmen and a businesswoman on one of the tables and she was telling me they go there every single day after work with their DSs and play Monster Hunter together. That's so amazing. they finish their daily work. They must have been in their mid to late 20s. Um, and yeah, they finish their daily work. They go and have a, a, a beer or their beverage of choice um, and just play Monster Hunter together at a bar. That's like, pretty sick. <laughs> and that's, that's just normal over there. That's just yeah, a standard yeah. thing. So I can believe that it's um, super popular over there. Definitely. Yeah, like I work with, with Ellie and her mum, so I couldn't imagine us all going 
to fucking Weatherspoons or whatever and all whipping out Monster Hunter. <laughs> I mean, like, just, just so the weird. idea in England, though, of going to a Weatherspoons and seeing a excuse me and seeing a group of people sitting at the table whipping out DS and all yeah. like switches and playing Monster. Everyone would look at them like, what on earth? Why have they come <laughs> out of their house to do that? Because yeah. that's unfortunately like the stigma in England of um, of gaming. But over there, it's such a normal, natural thing to do. Yeah, which is pretty, pretty fucking cool. It is pretty cool indeed. No, indeed. Well, I look forward to hearing more about Monster Hunter Rise. Um, I'm, it's not one I'm going to necessarily pick up myself because I haven't really got a lot of time at the moment to play. And between Yakuza and Bravely Default, I feel like my time's been... Yeah, you're, uh, you're pretty swamped there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm looking forward to hearing more about it because uh, no, yeah, I'm interested um, to see where this goes. It's going to be a game I'm going to sink countless hours into. Uh, I'm going to find me some some online partners to play with as well. Whoever's got Monster Hunter, hit me up. Um, I'm yeah, definitely uh, l- looking forward to playing more. For sure. I'll definitely try and rent it at some point. So even if I only have it for a few weeks, we can do a couple of hunts together and then I'll send it back. <laughs> yeah, sounds good, man. <laughs> um, so, I, uh, unlike you, haven't really played anything this week um, because I've been <laughs> super fucking busy. Yeah. <laughs> so busy. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so busy, I want to cry. Um, but yeah, between work and like house projects and stuff, I just haven't had a lot of time to game this week. Um, well, interestingly, though, I don't really play mobile games. In fact, I would argue, I'd say I hate mobile games. Mm. Um, I find them very frustrating. I, I like some, if they're done well. There's some mobile yeah. games that I'll still play every now and then. And see, I think this is my issue. Because I have had bad experiences with them, I just don't dabble in them. Mm. Yeah. Um, so Because I, it's, that, it's that whole like pay-to-play model really fucks me off. They Almost all of them have that, and it's so annoying. Yeah. So, um, but where I've been so busy with work, I just thought, fuck it. And I picked up this random one that I that flagged up on the, you know, like the play app to say, oh, this is the game of the week or whatever. Hmm. So I, um, it's called a Sniper 3D Assassin Shoot to Kill. And I thought, fuck it. I'll give it a whirl, see what it's like. And, uh, and I'm really enjoying it, actually. Really enjoying it. It has got a pay to play system, but it's yeah. done in such a way that you don't have to pay to play. And I never feel. Um, like it's infringing on my ability to play whenever I want. So it's it's literally you're you're, you're a stable sniper with one finger. You um, can control where the target is, like where you're aiming. Mm-hmm. The other finger you control the zoom, and there's a fire button. Simple as that. Um, oh, okay. You know, this, yeah, this sounds a lot like um, as a hitman sniper game. It's probably very similar. Very similar. Yeah, um, I was I was pretty hooked on that actually for a mobile game. It's pretty pretty freaking good. Yeah, and and, and they, I'm, uh, they even brought that uh, version to um to the console version as well, where you could you'd literally sit in a sniper nest and then you'd have to sort of it was almost like a puzzle where you'd like figure out I can kill this guy first and then you'd figure out the pattern and the order and uh, compete yeah. compete for high scores. And the and it, so this one is I mean it's probably not as uh, as good as the Hitman one because it's not as big a bigger brand but yeah <laughs> it's just it's just simple like it starts off quite simplistic it doesn't account for like bullet drop or anything like that with the first missions and the first guns you get um, yeah and it's quite obvious it'll be like oh you have to kill the guy with the blue headphones on and there'll be one guy with like massive blue headphones <laughs> um, but once you get out of the first town like the first city, which doesn't take long at all. Um, you then It then starts to add like bullet drop. It then starts to add some like extra things to the missions to kind of sort of be like, oh, you need to kill the guy who picks up the briefcase. But mm. one guy will carry the briefcase like behind a tree and then someone will come and pick it up from behind a tree. So you have to be watching for when he picks it up and carries it away. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's got lots of different modes, like a PvP mode, which I've not tried and I probably end up, won't ever. But um, <laughs> it uses like a, so it's got like an energy system. So that's where the pay to play comes in. Yeah. yeah. Um, so every mission uses one energy and your character has like 10 or 12 energies. Yeah. But honestly, I, you run out of energy and it usually refreshes in about three or four minutes. And considering it's a mobile game, it's not something I'm sitting there and playing for hours. It's 
I've got a quick break at work for 10 minutes. I'll play three or four rounds because they take no more than 30 seconds. Yeah. And then I'll put it down for two or three hours. By the time I pick it up again, I've refreshed all my energy. That's um, it, yeah. I think that's where, like, the mobile game comes into its own. Like, it's a, it's a game you play for, like, five minutes and it just kills some time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I mean, I've, I'm really enjoying it. I've done 60 missions on, the like, the main campaign bit and then a bunch of other, like, side stuff. But as I say, each one, you can do them in 30 seconds, if that, 20 seconds. So you can really like pick them up and go. And every time you get, uh, you complete a mission, you get some money, which goes towards upgrading your sniper rifle or buying a new one. Yeah. Um, it rewards you for headshots. It's just simple. And I'll tell you what, I'm really enjoying it. For a mobile game, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I don't feel pressured to play it. I don't feel... I, would, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily hooked on it, but I do go, oh, I've got a spare five minutes. I'll quickly have a quick like, shot on it, see how I do. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily like completely addicted to it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if you're looking for a mobile game about sniping, give it get, a whirl. It's pretty get, fun. Get Hitman. <laughs> yeah, get the, hit, get the Hitman one because that's probably better. That sounds way better. But if you want a cheaper version that uh, has probably worse graphics, um, then get this one because uh, <laughs> why? Why not? <laughs> not why not? This is not a sponsored uh, podcast. No, it's not sponsored by Hitman at all in any way. <laughs> um, but because I haven't played anything this week by a mobile game, and I thought, well, we don't really talk about mobile games, and I'm not going to be able to talk about that for long. I also wanted to talk about one other thing today, um, which is: Are you a Mike, are you a Mighty Ducks fan? The original Mighty Ducks films? Um, yeah, man, yeah. I love that. Um, growing up watching Mighty Ducks, man. Anything in that era of like early 90s, late late 90s sort of thing. I was all over yes. it. <laughs> so I'm not only a Mighty Ducks fan, but I'm a, a, a NHL ice hockey fan anyway. Um, yeah. And I don't know if you're aware, but the brand new Mighty Ducks TV series started this week on Friday. I am 26th. aware. <laughs> Um, have you watched it? I've not. No, I was. I've not, I've not looked on Disney. I've not had. The, I've not had the chance. I've just been piling all my time into Monster uh, Monster Hunter. Well, but don't worry. This, it, will, this will be spoiler free. Has it? Um, has it released all of the episodes, or is it like episodic, like once it's a week? It's going to be weekly, ten episodes once a week. Yeah. Um, so I've watched episode one called Game Changers, and uh, or what I can say so far, um, I won't say anything that's not in the trailers. So Emilio Estevez is in it. He is back as Bourbon, Gordon Bombay. Nice. Um, then they called him Bour- Bourbon Gondé then. <laughs> Gordon Bombay. Um, and he's back to his, like, grumpy, I hate hockey ways. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> so it's, honestly, from watching the first episode, it it reminds me a little bit of that first few episodes of Cobra Kai. Like, it really captures the 90s. Mm but also challenges like issues of today. Yeah. yeah. Captures it in that sort of like comical nineties comedy with like a bit of nineties storytelling and, uh, an old school like camera shots. And it, it just does it really, really well. Um, the story, as I say, without going into any detail, I think it very much, there's, you could, there's a lot of parallels to the original film. It can kind of see the parallels straight away. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm so excited about where it's going. Uh, the one thing about it, I don't have you watched the trailer? Uh, I've not seen That's anything cool. of it. I was just literally just going to go into it blind. Because I was like, it's Mighty so, Ducks, it'll be great. <laughs> so I've not so, watched anything about it. No, that's reasonable. So the the one thing I will say is that the ducks are not who they used to be anymore. Um, yeah, they so, are... so I have heard about this, um, this sort of slight twist. Yeah, so it's the ducks like announced in the trailer, isn't it? Sort of thing. Yeah, it is announced in the trailer. The ducks are now like a big corporate, um, almost like powerhouse Pee Wee team. They're uh, like champions, and they play. They they like one of the best in the in the entire area. Mm. Um, and they've almost it's almost like they've turned into the Hawks from the original film. Yeah, like they're, they're, that, they're the villains like, now, sort of thing. Yeah, exactly that. The super elite, we only let you in if you're the best of the best sort of um, arseholes, essentially. They've become yeah, arseholes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, 
it's that old Batman thing, isn't it? Either yeah, you dying you a hero, die or a hero, blah blah blah. Yeah, <laughs> or live long enough to become the villain, and they've become the villain. Um, so no, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see where they take this as they sort of following those old school footsteps of putting together a ragtag team. And like I said, I get that real Cobra Kai feel from it of them trying to tell an old school story in yeah. a, in a modern day setting. And I'm really looking forward to what they, what they bring. Yeah. Cobra Kai, but hockey. Yeah. Cobra Kai, but Let's Pokemon. Ho- now we're onto something. Oh, are we though? <laughs> I think that might be, that might be Pokemon too far. <laughs> just, just a touch too far. Um, but I think that's it. That's all we've got for uh, what we've been playing this week. As uh, I say, it's, it's only me and Mike. Um, but what we do have for you, as we don't have a special guest, as we said earlier, we do have a very special interview this week that we we did pre-record earlier in the week uh, with the one and only Stan Bush. He joined us to talk about his new album. And um, and so um, among some other things... Uh, yeah, just but, just well, quickly, if you don't know who Stan Bush is, he was, he was responsible for the Transformers movie soundtrack and some other like 80s classic like Kick, Kickbox and Bloodsport. Yeah, um, and if, if you ever listen to any of our previous podcasts, you'll know that we talk about him more than this probably should. Yeah, I mean, we're like big fans of him and we actually got to meet him, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it was a it was a it was a really fun interview. So uh, hopefully you guys all enjoy enjoy the interview as uh, as we'll play that now for you. Essentially, welcome everyone. We're here for a very special interview with the amazing Stan Bush. Hello, Stan. How are you today? Hi. How's it going? It's um, it's been a bit of a bit of a rush around <laughs> these last <laughs> few hours trying to get all this tech set up, but but yeah, we're we're pretty good now. Pretty good. Yeah, Finally, we got there in the end. <laughs> That's great. So, um, Mike, do you want to do you want to start? Kick, do you want to kick us off? Uh, go on, you go because I've still got to pull my notes up and stuff. So, I'll let you. Well, you're the pro at this. So, fir- <laughs> firstly, Stan, thank you very much for um, joining us for this interview. Uh, it's we've been very excited, uh, unbelievably uh, excited for the last few days. Uh, about this. Um, my pleasure. We are we're both big fans, but um, so. We wanted to start off with sort of just getting to know you a little bit better. Um, so, like, sort of, how did you get started in music? What was the what's the Stan Bush origin? Um, well, let's see. I grew up in Florida, and uh, my older brother started playing guitar, and we saw the Beatles on, uh, at, you know, back in '65 or whenever it was when we were like kids, and we were both like, "Wow," you know. So, uh, yeah, I played guitar a little uh, after. Uh, and then he switched to bass later but uh, the two of us played in bands for years and my mom plays piano as well as you know played piano um anyway so we uh, it was kind of a musical family my younger sister sings and that kind of thing so we're uh and anyway played through uh throughout school and and played in bands nightclubs later uh high school dances that kind of thing and uh it was fun it was like uh there were a lot of places to play around Florida and the South, you know, so uh, it was cool. Didn't know, it, well, eventually I got in, invited to join a recording group in Colorado. So that's where we uh, we started getting, you know, actually making records after that. So I spent like two and a half years in Colorado before I came to LA. So it's been, uh, it's been a fun ride. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it sounds, it sounds it indeed. So yeah, I think um, um, just just jumping straight into like a, a, a question that's been like I've wanted to know since like hearing uh-huh. about music. Like Shane, he introduced me to it um, like a few a year back or so when we met. Um, and so your music and lyrics um, often sort of have a reoccurring theme of like overcoming a struggle. And um, is that something you sort of keep in mind when you're writing the songs? Um, like an overwhelming sort of positivity to your to your songs and yeah that 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 kind of started with the touch it was like uh you know believe in yourself go for it that kind of thing and uh, a message of hope um anyway uh it seemed to be i just kind of fell into it after that i kept doing those kinds of songs two or three on each album and uh it's uh, kind of became my thing it's i don't know just uh 
the more I learn and more I've been around, it seems like, you know, like we, you, you know, humans as people, we don't realize how much power we have, you know, and uh, that, you know, if you believe in yourself and really go for it, you know, it's half of the, half of the battle is, is like, you know, confidence and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I know we can do amazing stuff. I think amazing things if we, uh, if we really, you know, believe it, we can do it. So it's a little silly, but. <laughs> no, no, we're, uh, we're firm believers in the power of Stan Bush and, and positivity oh, and, and all that. So that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> I don't deserve it's, it, but I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I mean, as, as, as uh, Mark was saying there, we, we're believers in the, the power of Stan Bush. And honestly, in the last 10 to 15 years, every interview, every struggle or difficult situation I've had myself in, always start my day always starts with some of your music to to psych uh-huh. me out get me ready for it that is that is a genuine truth as well well uh, that's really nice to hear thanks um so with uh, regards to as you say you um sort of started out when you're doing like bands with your some of your family in the sort of 60s and you've your career has sort of spanned a long period of of music from um sort of like the 70s and 80s through to now what's your view on the the sort of where music's going now coming into this new age of streaming and away from sort of vinyl cassettes and cds yeah that's it's uh it's kind of uh different for sure it's just evolved you know ever since the the the, the Napster thing back in the '90s sort of seemed to start it all, where you know you could literally you know take somebody's music, somebody works and spends hundred thousand dollars on an album or whatever, and you could just sort of take it, you know, and, and give it away or whatever and for free, and it it just seemed like now how are you going to make money doing that? You know, <laughs> yeah. of course performing you can still uh, you know make a living, but it's uh, it's it's been a little bit different, and now you know even with films you can do that, so. The, as the internet's gotten faster it's sort of changed the whole business of course apple had a big a big part in in changing it all i mean they had uh, itunes of course revolutionized uh, the way music is disseminated and then uh, you know you have uh, you know the streaming now and people don't even need to actually physically own the uh, the the uh, and you know you, you go through sort of spotify and the uh, you know the streaming thing it's uh, it's just uh you know, it's great. You can get your music out there, and but it, it doesn't, the royalty thing, you know, it's not obviously not as uh, as good as it was in the old days where, you know, you'd hear it on the radio and the people would buy your, yeah. I mean, you still buy albums and, and things that uh, people, I think people like to have the uh, the artwork and the book, the booklet with the CD and the, you know, but you're right. I mean, it's uh, even even cars. You know, you don't, a lot of new cars don't have CD players anymore. I, don't, I think none of them do now. So uh, yeah, well, yeah, they have like the built-in <laughs> streaming services. <laughs> so what what's your preference? Do you are you quite happy to stream music, or would you do you like going out and buying buying albums? Well, um, I love the way vinyl sounds. Uh, I have some a collection of things, but I haven't had a a working uh, record player, you know, in a long time turntable, you know, I used to have a really good one, but uh, again, it's just one of those things you sort of, you know, if you're a collector and, and you know, you want to pursue that, it's uh, it's obviously a, a great sound, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's CD sound great. And of course, streaming, it, it should all be identical if it's digital, right? Um, so it depends like on, an, yeah. It's like an authenticity to live vinyl, isn't there? Like I, sort of collect yeah. like a few little vinyls here and there but um but yeah there is like a, a different sound to it like a good it's a good quality to it yeah sure yeah it's like a rich sort of low end and it's very uh yeah it's very com- it comes alive kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so um i imagine it's quite a good feeling like hearing your song on the radio and like actually picking up those like physical copies as well like you know seeing mm-hmm. it made rather than um, just sort of seeing it on a, on a list, on a, on a screen sort of thing. Yeah, it is it is a very cool thing to hear yourself on the radio. Back in the 80s, I sang a bunch of commercials at the time, and, you know, I'd hear, I'd do like Toyota, Coors Beer, and a bunch of things, and uh, 
so you know my my two older kids they were they were little then and they said who is that singing that's daddy <laughs> you know they I'd get pages to yell you know and, and, i love what you do for me you know that kind of thing or, yeah uh, that's pretty you know. cool <laughs> but it's uh it's been fun i mean it's uh being able to make a, a living doing something i love and, and uh you know the other thing like you said is the connection with the fans i mean we're when you're playing a show a concert and you can look out and you see all these people they know the lyrics and they're singing along with you it's like wow you know yeah. that's a cool feeling <laughs> sometimes i forget what i'm doing and have to watch somebody to, to, <laughs> to <find laughs> remember the lyrics yeah and <laughs> um, so Oh, sorry, go on. Go I was just going to say that must really sort of show the impact your music has had when you see fans all singing the lyrics and they all know them up, like word by word. Yeah, yeah. It seems like uh, girls know the words more than boys, more than guys. You know, they're, we're like, we listen to the guitar and the drums, you know, and like uh, <laughs> the girls know all the words. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> must be like a primal thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about um dare to dream today the the new album mm -hmm. um so you recorded that amidst the pandemic what what was that like and how, um, did, it, how did it influence the the music that you were writing well i i've actually read and heard this from other people but um it was a very creative time because we were sort of shut in everybody was for you know most of the year the whole year and uh it's um you know, my producer, Holger Fath, guitar player and great, great uh, producer and my best friend. Uh, anyway, he and I uh, work, worked exclusively on this album for the, the most of last year and uh, 2020. And then uh, there were a couple songs we had done before that during, uh, you know, tw uh, 2019, like the the 80s song. We did that one and not one or one or two others. But uh, but really, the. The pandemic was uh, really tough for a lot of people, but I guess if there's a silver lining, it's the creative side, you know, because you uh, you literally don't have any anything else to do except you know work on music. I mean, for I didn't for for the most part, so it uh, uh, we're real happy with how the album came out. It's uh, you know people seem to really like it. The reviews have been great. And, yeah, so. it's like we love it. We've got it on on permanent rotation. <laughs> Oh. yeah and but so with the um the pandemic in mind did it did that adjust or inspire any of the songs or the lyrics that you had or was, did you already have an idea of how the album was going to play out before the pandemic sort of hit um that's a good question um there were a few of the songs that had like a kind of a deeper meaning like uh the times of your life you know that one where you're uh you sort of you know reassessing everything and thinking about you know like how much time we have on this earth and you know what's important and what's you know sort of you know seems like time's just just flying by and and what are we really doing with our lives and that kind of thing and, and are you you know do you remember what you did you know like last week let alone you know five years ago that kind of stuff you know it's like uh makes you stop and think yeah so i think like in terms of uh well dare to dream itself is a very uplifting kind of message and i think the uh you know things like the pandemic because really you know we didn't really know at least in the early days you know how bad it was going to be i mean you know we were uh it's sort of uh it's a wake-up call you know we're uh life is a gift you know and we're uh, we're lucky to be here so so are you yeah no, definitely obviously um at the minute it's it's obviously there's no tours or there's very minimal tours but are you looking to tour with this album I'd like to, um, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that things open up this summer. We actually did a, I have a local sort of acoustic unplugged kind of band. We do, uh, you know, Zeppelin and other covers, you know, just for fun. And uh, well, we played Friday night and uh, it was great. The, the big uh, group of people at the uh, sort of a concert and a local shopping center area, you know, like an out, an outdoor thing. And they, they loved it. It was, it was very cool because it was the first time a couple of the women, you know, 
got, uh, girls were like crying and because they were so happy to be uh, actually listening to live music again. You know? Yeah, so that's... I'm really hoping that 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 kind of thing, you know, the, the rest of the world opens up as well. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's getting better every every day or every week, and you know, and uh, I don't know how it is over there, but uh, I've I've heard you guys were locked down not too long ago, like just a few weeks ago, right? Uh, we're, we're technically still still locked down yeah. um, oh. we're, we're, we're on our on our way out of it now but it's a it's like a three month process to get out of it so yeah, we're, we're still in that process yeah <laughs> yeah well, yeah i wish all the best on that so but as you say like the the time inside it's uh, it's a great opportunity to to reevaluate things and do different things. And uh, I mean, us ourselves, this podcast came out of the pandemic, so yeah, yeah. Um, we completely understand what you're saying in that, like oh, wow. taking that opportunity to have that creative process. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really cool. I, you know, I think you're right. I, I think uh, people have been more creative and sort of uh, maybe you know just like I say, reevaluating self. Uh, you know awareness that kind of stuff i think that uh it's it's good in that regard you know getting people to think differently yeah so you you saying about um like reevaluating and and how some of the songs were sort of referring to that like thinking about family members and stuff was there is there are any of the songs particularly aimed at any particular family member because i was listening to it earlier and there's some tracks in there that, that feel very raw and like they're particularly aimed at certain family members that you're you've got a lot of love for oh well um probably personal well, the most personal song would be the last song uh called home and uh yeah i grew up like i said in florida and uh you know i guess everybody sort of has a deep down yearning to go back you know where they came from and and uh you know see the people you grew up with and you know you you can't really go back but you know you can in your mind sort of thing and uh but it it, you know, it's that song kind of about that and about, you know, it's as much a, uh, you know, a feeling as it is a place, I think, you know, when you're like, you want to go back to being a kid again, when you didn't have any, you know, mortgage payments, and <laughs> you know, stress and, you know, make a living and blah, 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 you know, it's uh, yeah. back to playing with Transformers. <laughs> it's a simpler, yeah, it's a simpler time, you know, and, uh, you know, it's cool. Yeah, it's cool to, to, to you know think about that i think you know it's like all of us have like maybe the same urge as the salmon you know they're swimming back upstream (laughs) (laughs) to try to go home yeah no definitely and and i mean with the the tracks on there as well it it very much sort of reminiscing the 80s a little bit as well is there do you have a a bit of a yearning to return to those simpler times yeah yeah i mean that that's what that 80s song is about yeah uh how the music you hear you hear a song and I'm, i think this is this way with everybody you hear a song that you remember growing up and you're like yeah you know and it, it takes you back to that time it's a feeling you know it's uh it's very cool you know you uh everybody has their sort of time i mean really for me i 70s music is is maybe more more that way for me but the 80s song it just worked better lyrically and everything to be uh you know can't stop this feeling of the 80s you know <laughs> it was <Yeah>. like <laughs> yeah definitely but that's a that was a cool uh that, that was actually my son in the music video uh that played a young me so <laughs> i didn't do that <laughs> yeah oh, that's pretty looking. cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. how did how did how did that come about was that your decision to see if he was that something he wanted to do or did you want to get him involved in that no yeah it was my idea and i you know played the song for him and he said yeah i'll do it and what the the guy who played the drummer um with the, the guy holding the drumsticks that, that's his best friend and he, he's not a, he's not a musician at all <laughs> and my, my son is a musician he plays guitar and stuff so you know and sings so uh, but neither, it, uh, neither, neither was Ringo but they let him hold the drumsticks <laughs> <laughs> that's funny <laughs> um so obviously you've you've spoken recently um ha- about the most recent transformers series because that's obviously been heavily linked to your music over the years um how did you actually get involved in that brand well the touch was the original you know transformers the touch and dare those songs uh 
back in, you know, 86, I guess it was, um, uh, I had this song, The Touch, with I wrote with Lenny Macaluso, and uh, it was on the, uh, the Barrage album, this is my second album, and uh, the record label got it in this movie, uh, you know, we had originally writ written the song, you know, with Cobra in mind, Stallone picture, and uh, but instead the record label told me we we got it in this movie, uh, a cartoon movie about robots, and I'm like, what? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it it turned out to be a really huge phenomenon worldwide, and uh, it's been incredible to be you know associated with the brand. Uh, Hasbro's been great, and uh, as you just mentioned, the 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 animated series on Netflix, there's like a trilogy, I guess, uh, War for Cybertron, something something. Um, anyway, I did two music videos recently that just came out two weeks ago on Netflix and uh, they're both Transformers. Uh, the, song, the songs are True Believer and Heat of Attack. And uh, they're, they're very cool videos. They, they, uh, they did a great job. Actually the same director who shot the 80s video. And there was another one that we did uh, when the album came out uh, back in uh, October, well, November. It was uh, it's the one called Born to Fight. And Netflix contacted me just like, maybe September or something uh, this past year uh, to see if I, we could write a song, see if I could write a song about fighting and um, like, okay. Um, so anyway, we wrote Born to Fight and it was, the timing was perfect because the album was nearly finished and we uh, came up with the song and they loved it. So they, they did a music video with myself and uh, footage from the, from the, 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 there's two most popular shows on Netflix, the anime shows, and they're called uh, Baki and King and Ashura. And uh, anyway, so they had me like playing this uh, tough guy. And I, uh, my, my wife does sort of uh, fitness training and everything. So she was t teaching me some fight moves and things. So, <laughs> so I would look <laughs> like a total, total idiot. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a lot of fun. Like, it, it was really fun. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, it, it's like a tongue-in-cheek but it's kind of cool as well you know what i mean yeah. like, the song is great i mean i love born to fight it's like the first song on the album and so that worked that came out really good and uh, that was sort of the kickoff and it's amazing like i don't know that bands are even doing music videos as much now uh but but i have four on this new album you know the 80s was the first one and born to fight and then these two new transformers ones that just came out so yeah um What's the next question? Yeah, that, that is a uh, that is impressive. Like you say, I, I don't know how many bands have got music videos at the moment. So to have have four coming out, right? Uh, four tracks of music albums is is yeah, it's impressive. So yeah. Um, yeah. So the Been next, cool. uh, I just I just wanted to ask about um, the Transformers as a brand. Like, it's sort of taken quite the journey. Um, and how do you, how do you feel about like? where it was when you started working with it to where it is now? Well, yeah, that's at the time when the Transformers movie, the original cartoon, Transformers the movie came out in, in 86. They, uh, you know, it was, uh, people really liked it and all that, but it seemed to sort of reemerge as a cult following kind of thing. Um, story of my life, by the way. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the the first two Jean-Claude Van Damme movies were the same kind of thing. They were like, uh, I mean, it was a it was a cool movie, both of them, and uh, but the Transformers as well. They they got more popular later after a couple of decades. I think mm. I started they started having these conventions, and I would go to uh, the first one was in 1997 uh, in Rochester, New York. It was a called BotCon, you know, robot convention, and uh, yep. the the people were awesome. And they uh, myself and Vince Dicola, who did the music for the movie he uh, he also did rocky four uh score you know uh we performed for the uh transformers conventions and over the years i've done you know several of them and both sometimes as a performer uh, or sometimes just as a guest uh, you know special guest people who do some of the narrators from the, the movies and whatnot and of course the touch um finally was in one of the live action movies the latest one bumblebee movie and they had the touch a, sort of a cameo or uh in a yeah. Cool scene where, yeah 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 i won't that was a, go a good movie by the way i think that might have been my favorite one yeah that, yeah, yeah that was we, we were having this conversation well. the other day yeah 
<laughs> yeah, by far the, the best of the live action ones. So for the touch I, to come up on any of them, that's the best one to have it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. But yeah, no, it's it's just been, like I say, the people at these conventions are just amazing. I did one in England, by the way, so three years ago, and uh, called uh, the, the is T, TF Nation, and it was up uh, Birmingham, I think. Um, yeah, they have a lot of conventions uh, up that uh, way, yeah. Birmingham, right? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say it right. <laughs> yeah, of all the accents, that one's the worst. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, that yeah, was that, cool. that, but, but the people, the people at these things are just amazing. They're just like so awesome. They, they're so nice and so polite and wonderful. It's just uh, makes you really feel like humbled, you know, to to be like you know appreciated like that. And it's like, oh man, you know, thanks so much, you know. And you just want to hug them, you know. They're <laughs> it's just it's just great, you know. Yeah, no, that's. I've been to a few conventions myself, and uh, and I, I know what you mean in that, like everybody there is just just full of love, full of love and positivity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's there for the like the same reasons, aren't they? So, sort of like everyone's for like a, the same sort of mindset and things. So, it's nice that you all like everyone like gels together and like gets on and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's right. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do, right? We're, you know. <laughs> It's not not uh, you know there's so so much stuff dark dark things and film, movies and uh, music and a lot of everything's like dark and edgy and cool and it's like what happened to just being happy you know and love you know and all this stuff so uh, I don't know it's uh it's I'm, I'm not saying everything but uh, but maybe that hey, but this I'm trying to be positive I guess <laughs> yeah I think yeah, there's nothing wrong with a bit of positivity it's definitely yeah. needed in these current like situation as well yeah yeah so yeah go ahead on the on the uh on the on the note of that like doing something a bit different um as you said like you've been involved with transformers throughout the years in many different ways is there uh -huh. any other shows or brands that you've seen that you'd that you've just thought i'd love to have been in involved in that i'd love to have had an opportunity to to do a song for that particular brand or show um well I really like to have, have a song in Cobra Kai. I don't know if you've seen that series on that, <laughs> but I really like that. I was just going to like, I was just going to like perfect. say that, yeah, that would be like the perfect show for, for some yeah. Stan Bush. Like, right. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, I like that sort of, uh, you know, that's the action movie thing, you know, is, is kind of, I mean, you know, like whenever there's mission impossible movie or, uh, you know, any of those kind of movies, I, I like, uh, you know, I, I love that stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice yeah, so. set in that era as well of like the 80s and 90s and like 70s, yeah, 80s, that, 90s, that sort of like. That's, yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say what you just said about the 80s. The movies then were so cool. The, the songs, like the songs in the movies were amazing. You know, just whatever it would be, like Top Gun or, uh, you know, Back to the Future or something. That the, the music was a big part of the movie. and uh, Yeah, it really was, yeah. You'd sort of walk out of the theater, you know, singing the song, and it'd be some memorable, like, anthem. That was another thing, too, that, uh, like the 80s music, um, it was all about the hook, you know. The, the, you'd remember the name of the song, you'd remember the melody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, it's a yeah. different it's a different style of writing and uh but I, I sort of still stuck in the 80s because of that no so, yeah, but you're you're right though because there's there's films that now that like from the 80s that you all you have to do is hear that track from the from the film and it will instantly take you back to that film and you'll remember every scene that that song was related with um you don't get that as much anymore like there's some fantastic composers out there don't get me wrong but they're not quite the way the 80s did it in those action films yeah yeah, that's right. Um, so have you got any sort of favorite movies from that era? Or oh, like, boy. Or like uh, songs from those movies that are like just stick in your head? Um, well, I mentioned Top Gun, that uh, that's what dreams are made of. That song is awesome. And uh, that was, uh, let's see, Van Halen. And uh, let's see who else. Oh, of course, the, the greatest of all uh, anthems for positive and, uh, was, uh, you know, Rocky, the original, uh, you know, Eye of the Tiger. That's a, yeah, what yeah. a great, great song. 
Yeah. So, that was actually the late seventies, I think. But um, but that was yeah, awesome. On, yeah. That was a uh, yeah, absolute. That that's just that's embedded in everyone now. I think that's a song that no matter who you are, where you're from, you know it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, just going, just going back to Netflix. Um, obviously, they're like a key service in everyone's home now. What was it like um, working with them? Um, really good. I mean, they, uh, like you say, you know, to have someone, you know, uh, that's such a huge entertainment company the world over now, and uh, you know, the fact that they love my music and and uh, wanted to, you know, help or use me or something, use my music to, to promote their shows. It's just pretty cool. You know, it's like, it, uh, it's very sort of validating and, uh, but and they've been great to work with and, uh, you know, the people who worked on the video music videos and, uh, it's just been terrific. It's sort of win-win too, you know, cause you have like, uh, they want to promote their shows and, you know, it helps me promote my, my album, the new album. So like mutually beneficial sort of thing. Exactly. Win win. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely. Um, so you also a few years back, if my memory serves me, you had a, f- a few tracks on the video game Shadow Shadow Warrior. Yeah, um, Shadow Warrior. Yeah, a song called Warrior. That was a. Uh, yeah, that was fun. That's a. Uh, yeah, those. It's a cool, uh, cool game. Warrior was like a you know similar kind of thing. Um, I don't know, got into this fight thing. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, it's it's fun though. There, like I say, the uh, Lenny Macaluso he co-wrote that one with me as well. But uh, but yeah, it's sort of my voice seems suited to that sort of thing. You know that uh, that yeah. sort of kick-ass thing. You know, it's like yeah. And that, that, that brings me on to, um, are you a fan at all of video games? Is you know, you I'm not, not a gamer. Um, I, you know, I, I the, the graphics on, uh, on them are, are ama- in them are amazing. It's just, uh, my, uh, my son, the one that was in the eighties, he, he plays video games all the time. And, uh, I, uh, a lot of really cool people that I've met there in the gaming thing, you know, but, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, but hey, I've had I was just going to say, yeah. Was, sorry to interrupt. No, <laughs> I, was, no, I, was, I was just going to say, yeah, uh, Cobra Kai had a had a game. Maybe that's like you're in. You know, <laughs> if you can get in the, in that game, then <laughs> you can get oh, in the right. series. <laughs> yeah, that'd be. Cool. Yeah, I had a game recently that came out. You, I mean, you said um about Shadow Shadow Warrior that being quite a fun experience. Would you, if if um an opportunity to do music for a video game came your way again, would that be something you'd be interested in doing? Absolutely. Yeah. If the, if the right game came across, obviously. Yeah, yeah that would be awesome. That's uh, definitely. So um, just going sort of back to music that you're listening to, like you said, you were very heavy set in the 70s era and that the sort of songs that you listen to but what are you what are you currently listening to um let's see it's uh there's not a lot of new new music that i'm even like sort of i that i even know about you know and uh but you know coming up i you know just like everybody you know raised up on the beatles and led zeppelin and uh i love all that stuff and then later, you know, bands like Foreigner, their early stuff, and uh, you know, there's just so many great bands through the years that uh, yeah. that I Journey. I mean, uh, let's see, I worked with um, some of those guys. Like when Journey broke up, uh, I had I was working with Jonathan Kane on a couple of songs. The writer, you know, the main guy, so a keyboard player, writer. Uh, he's great, by the way, great writer, uh, very talented. And Jim Valance, who wrote the Brian Adams hits, you know, he was uh, worked with him a bit too. So I've written with a lot of really good people, you know, and uh, it sort of helps because you you know you can't sort of do it all. I mean, you can't necessarily think of everything, and uh, like it's hard to be original. I don't know if, if you notice my songs. Uh, one of the things I try to do is to keep like uh, have transitions where 
it won't the whole song won't be in the same key you'll just be going along and all of a sudden yeah. it's in like in a different key it's like whoa you know and that's <laughs> you know where did that come from but it but it works you know you just like uh but it, it lifts it gives a sort of and also it's unexpected you know and uh i don't want to i try really hard to to be unpredictable so uh that was one of the things that uh like the 80s had uh some cool stuff like that like the mutt lang stuff and uh some of the um anyway but uh yeah so modulations key changes uh, it's uh keeps keeps things interesting i think yeah so do you yeah definitely um in terms of writing like where do you sort of get your inspiration from um well it's sort of like um like some people i guess come up with lyrics first and then then put put the, put the lyrics to music sort of the chicken or the egg thing you know but for me it's Usually I have to do the music first. I come up, I sit with an acoustic and um, just if I come up with like a couple of chord changes and, and a little melody and I think, oh, wow, that's cool. And then, uh, you know, you just sort of keep playing it, build on it. Maybe you'll put a verse idea with a, with a chorus idea, maybe a transition. And uh, it really takes uh, a lot of time. Sometimes weeks will go by and I won't get anywhere with something. Other things sort of come together quickly and then maybe I'll come up with a, a hook line, like a, a, mel a memorable melody that's like really, you know, you just, you, you just, it's very pleasing melody that you, you know, and then uh, maybe a title will emerge. And then from there, you know, you kind of work backwards and fill in the, the lyrics, you know, for, for like, a, you get a theme first and then, then you know, then write. Yeah. So write it just sort of gra gradually builds. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of a process and, and uh, I try not to rush it. Also, one of the things that uh, if if I'm not really excited about a song, I won't even finish it. You know, it's like that kind of thing. So, but uh, yeah, that makes it's, perfect it, sense. It, yeah. it really, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, some people can just sit down and just you know, music just flows out of them. But you know, I have to sort of work at it. You know, so. well, that that leads into so your with your creative process, an album like Dare to Dream. What what sort of time frame did that take you to put together? We were doing a, a song at a time, like uh, I would write something, you know, similar to what I just described. And then uh, I'd sort of go out to uh, the producer has a home studio, you know, Holger, and uh, I'd bring the song out and play, you know, play it on acoustic guitar, get a get an idea for how the track is going to go and just basically sing. A, a rough vocal with the acoustic guitar part and then he would sort of build up the track from that and then i would go back at a later time and do do a final vocal and uh and it it really worked well because uh i think it's like the old days uh a lot of bands they would just be all in the room at the same time and they you know bang out a song and as a band and i don't even i don't know how you would even do that you know um I'm, i guess it depends on the song but uh some of those songs would work that way but usually i think you have to have some sort of some sort of idea that you're, you know, you're, but usually there's a songwriter who works ahead of time and gets some kind of structure first and, and the yeah. band puts, puts their stamp on it creatively. And, uh, but it's fun. It's uh, it's like a puzzle, you know, you, you're just like, well, this doesn't work and uh, this is cool and, and we can do this over here. It's, but it's fun. You know, it's like uh, a lot of ideas sort of come later as you're building it up and uh for parts that work and things like i say it's just it's hard not to it's hard to also remember like i, I hear melodies and I'll, I'll remember stuff from you know 50 years ago that i heard and i you know i i, I say where did i hear that and then you know what i mean and uh you can't like you got to be careful not to inadvertently steal something you know <laughs> or yeah. borrow something. borrow is a better word but, uh, <laughs> yeah we get that so do you do you go in did you go into the process knowing like roughly how many tracks you wanted on the album or was it just a i'm just going to work a song at a time and then whatever i've got when i get to a point i'm happy that's the album oh yeah so that was the thing i was saying before um we'd go and do a song and then you know it after a few weeks that song would really be coming together and and uh, maybe even get a final mix right or nearly so and then then start a new idea and that kind of thing so it was like like a song by song and then yep. over a period of 
uh, over a year, year and a half or whatever, then we'd have everything, a full album. And uh, usually like 11 songs, 10's, 10's enough, but 11's a little better. And, uh, you know, nine isn't enough. <laughs> I think 11's I that sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, the, it just takes, it takes a lot of time, I think, to, to come up with something really good. But uh, like I say, I'm really happy with Dare to Dream. The, the, the song itself, Dare to Dream, was like, I thought it was a really cool melody I had. And, and, uh, the, but the title just sort of popped into my head that the, 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 the words Dare to Dream, you know, it was like, wow, you know. And I was a little concerned because I have a previous album from like, I don't know, six or seven years ago, maybe, maybe eight years, called Dream the Dream. And it was very close to, uh, you know, that, that title. And I was like, Ah, uh, why not? <laughs> just <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. It's like nobody's like I can do what I want. You know, it's like that, that's kind of a cool feeling. You know, and uh, but also there's uh, three songs on the new album that have the word dream in the title. You know, dream big, uh, dare to dream, and and then uh, what's the other one? Um, oh, uh, that's the one that's like. Uh, I feel, like, I feel like you should know this <laughs> yeah i should know this. We, we tested on this later <laughs> um yeah lost in a dream that a dream yeah, yeah. of love is called, yeah. a dream yeah. of love so anyway totally different songs you know but uh but i thought you know why not again it, it's it's a theme you know it's like uh it's like i remember some of the coolest albums would have like uh like there'd be a thread going through the whole thing, right? Like, um, like Billy Joel, uh, what was that uh, album he did? Almost like, like, a, did like a musical interlude, and it would come back and recur later in the album. And uh, Stranger, yeah. I think, is the one. Yeah, almost like a, a, a an album that tells a story, sort of thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um. I just I just got lost in my notes <laughs> um just quickly going back to the uh transformers question at talk and this is the last question we're going to ask on this is there ever been a point in your career where you just really wanted to not be associate like really pull away from it because we, we noticed on your twitter you you refer to yourself as the touch guy has there ever been a point where you just wished you weren't that you weren't involved in that not really no it's um like i say that the touch is uh it's kind of had a life of its own and i'm just sort of following along yeah. you know <laughs> but it no it's a great song and uh i've always uh i've always been happy to have that song at least it's not some stupid song <laughs> you know yeah, but, yeah uh, it could be worse <laughs> no but no we were taught but before i mentioned the conventions and things and these so people would come up and tell me that that those songs, the touch and dare, you know, literally changed their lives in in some cases, and uh, or maybe gave them uh, the strength to come through a tough time, you know, things like that. And hearing yeah. that kind of stuff is just so humbling. It's like incredible. So you know, but so so, so that yeah, it's it's been uh, it's it's an honor to be you know to have that song. So I've never really felt no, I've never really felt that 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 song was a, an albatross or something, you know, or the, you yeah. know, even a temporary vacation from the song. I mean, I, for, for, first of all, I could never do a concert and not play the touch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd be tarred and feathered. <laughs> yeah, there'd be riots on your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so, I'll, I'll let Shane say the story, but um, initially we started out as video game streamers. And um, one of the games that Shane was playing was particularly a tough game. He's having a tough time. And uh, Shane, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you take it away. But... Um, yeah. So as Mike was saying, I was having a particularly tough time. It was, it was on a stream, um, and I, it was, a, it was like a final boss battle. And I think I tried it, pushing on twenty five times. I was getting very angry and very frustrated. And I was literally, my words were, I'm going to quit. I'm turning it off. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. Uh, and Mike was, Mike turned to me and said, no, put, put a bit of Stan Bush on. You'll be fine. Put a just bit of Stan more, on. Just and one more go. One more try. 
Um, so yeah, I threw one of your albums on and then straight away, did it straight away. Just Aww. I just focused on the album and it just got me through it. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's so great. yeah. But I yeah, mean, as well, I said earlier, like at any time there's any sort of difficult situation I have to face, it's we we've we now just refer to it as as like this the stambush mode. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I mean, it's, one guy was a lawyer. He, he said whenever he was about to go in the courtroom in a trial, he would play the touch before he goes, you know, so stuff like that, you know, it just makes makes your day, you know, kind of makes you feel like, oh, OK, I'm doing something worthwhile, you know, and uh, it's uh, pretty cool. One little kid wrote me a, a, a fan letter and he said, uh, I, he clearly wasn't very, he was probably under 10 or something. And he said, uh, you're my biggest fan. <laughs> he got it backwards. <laughs> that, was <cute. laughs> that was cute. I like that. So <laughs> with, with, with regards to Dare to Dream then, if you, if you, if you were to pick one song on that album that is your standout favorite song from the album, which, which song would it be? The new album? Yeah. Uh, wow. Probably Born to Fight. I just love that song. It's just, uh, you know, it's that sort of AOR song that uh, has has single potential, but it's also meat and potatoes. You know, it's a it's a real power a power track. Those are hard to write. You know, it's uh, to write <clears throat> write a rock an edgy rock song and, and also have it be sort of catchy and uh, and also also because it's the newest song by, by a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'll, it's it's a it's a great I, album I, opener as well. I like all of them. I mean, the uh, the times of your life is really cool. Dare to Dream is is a good one too. I think they uh, they all have something that like makes me uh, I don't know remember you know write the writing process. It's like you know it's it's sort of like songwriting is is not easy. It's kind of hard, um, and it's like I can't always get a good song. But but it's sort of like I know it when I see it kind of thing. You know what I mean? It's like you yeah. something's coming together and you're like, yeah, this is good. You know, and yeah, uh, it's it's a cool feeling. I think that's the first time I've ever heard a musician say that like music is hard. <laughs> like well, usually they're just it, like, oh yeah, it's like done in a day or whatever. And then but you're well, like, you know, you had to work for it. That's it, it, that's it is work. You know, the I think in like my old stuff years ago. I think if I have, if there's anything that I maybe gave up too soon on the lyrics a little bit, you know what I mean? You, uh, I, you get to a point in your life where you're like, oh, okay, now I know what's good and I'm not going to like settle anymore. You know, it's like, you know, I th I'm smarter now than I was back in the old days, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Is that, was, so I was just going to say just... with, with regards to that point, Stan, if, uh, is there any songs that you started maybe like, 15 20 years ago but never finished and then came back to 10 years later because now you had a different view on life and you've gone back and gone oh actually that thing i abandoned i can now use has that ha yeah. happened yeah that's happened definitely um yeah true believers uh was a really cool song too that was one of the new ones i i like that song more now than when i wrote it and uh the uh like i said you can see that on the netflix video but uh um, they they rented a red semi and I'm like driving the semi well pretending to drive it and uh, <laughs> yeah. they have like smoke and smoke smoke fog machine and all and I'm playing guitar and it's it's just really fun so yeah check out True Believer video and and Heat of Attack it's another power like a Survivor type of deal you know like a rock a rocker but uh, but no I I just uh, just want to like you know it. The thing is when you finish an album and like it, it gets to the point where you're like oh man i can't do this again <laughs> you know what i mean but then like a couple of years like a year or two later you're like okay so you start getting more ideas and but uh but like i say it's a, it's a bit of a slog to come up with uh you know 10 10 or 12 good songs that uh that you're really happy with so yeah mike you wanted to you had a question you wanted to ask uh, no, no, he kind of covered it. Yeah, so oh, okay, <laughs> we're both on the on the on the same yeah, wavelength yeah. then. <laughs> um, well, I think that's that's everything that we wanted to ask you, Stan. Um, so, I mean, again, we can thank you for giving us the time today. 
to uh, sort of have a conversation with you and, and talk about the new album. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Really appreciate you having me. And uh, thanks for your uh, support. Appreciate Excellent. that. Um, so just just quickly, like, um, well, I'll take your time or whatever, but um, like, where can where's the best place for people to find you and your music and everything about you? You know. Everything. Oh yeah, just just go to my website stanbush.com and uh, find out what's happening. If there's any, hopefully, some shows coming up later okay, this yeah. year, <laughs> and that's what I'm really looking forward to um, is performing again. But yeah, they have the the new videos are on there and of course the uh the albums are all available and uh i really appreciate your uh, support thanks again and yeah you got the touch <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that's, you, that's that's a that's, that's a dream fulfilled yeah. for <laughs> that's, that's, yeah that's that's my night done i'm happy now i go to sleep happy <laughs> all right no no thank you stan we really appreciate you uh you yeah, coming yeah, thanks today. a lot yeah all the best Take so yeah that was the stan bush interview hope you all enjoyed that as much as we did uh we definitely fangirled a little bit maybe a little bit too hard um and that's been especially, this week's oh, sorry go on i was just gonna say especially uh you got the touch <laughs> yeah finger guns loved it <laughs> absolutely loved it about that was that a childhood dream for you shane it was it was that that was that's why I've been struggling to play games this week. I'm still getting over it. <laughs> Not been able to cope. But yeah, just, just still got the soundtrack on repeat. Just like, can't believe I met him. Yeah, literally. Yeah, uh, big thanks to Stan and, and his team and that for, for getting that interview set up and everything. Um, but yeah, well, that was great. And that's been this week's episode of Triple XP. Join us next episode where we'll have another special guest, maybe. We've not figured it out yet. <laughs> like I said, we've both been very busy. But we'll, we'll get a guest out yet. If not, we'll have one of the usuals back. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. We certainly did. We do have a Discord link now, so you can find that below and carry on the conversation. Um, so, yeah, catch you next time. Thanks. Bye. Triple FD. Triple XD.